In this video, we will discuss the aging changes that you may encounter in the cells, the respiratory system, and the cardiovascular system. This video will provide an overview of aging in these three systems. For more details, you will want to refer to your textbook. As we age, the total number of function or se functional cells in our body will decrease. Muscle and bone mass will decrease, and this will lead to a decrease also in lean body mass. With this decrease in lean body mass will come an increased proportional amount of fat within our bodies. With a decrease in lean body mass, we will also experience a decrease in total body water. This in turn will make older adults much more susceptible to dehydration. Many aging changes occur to our respiratory system. Changes to the connective tissue of the nose leads to a tipping of the nose downward. Older adults are also more likely to breathe through their mouths, which may contribute to snoring and possibly obstructive sleep apnea. The mucus in the nose of older adults becomes more dry, leading to the feeling of continual nasal stuffiness. In terms of the chest itself, the ribs and tissues within the lungs become more rigid, making it difficult for them to expand and contract as they did when they were younger. The cilia become less effective in removing mucus and bacteria from the lungs. Older adults also experience a decrease in the total number of alveoli within the lungs themselves. Overall, the lungs become smaller, less firm, lighter, and more rigid. All of these things together make it more difficult to get air in and out of the lungs, leading to increased residual volumes and decreased lung capacity. These things also place older adults at higher risk for the, develop, for the development of respiratory infections, such as pneumonia. Let's now take a look at the cardiovascular system. We will discuss the changes in the anatomy and physiology of the heart, as well as the blood vessels throughout the body. In terms of anatomy, we do not, need to see, we do not see any significant changes in the overall size of, size of the heart. This being said, we do, however, see a slight increase in the size of the left ventricle. The atrioventricular valves, called the mitral and tricuspid valves, tend to become thicker and more rigid which in turn may lead to incomplete valve closure and the presence of both systolic and diastolic murmurs. If these valves become too thick and rigid, it may lead to future, health, to future heart failure as the heart needs to pump with more force to get the blood out to the body. In terms of vessels, the aorta tends to become dilated and elongated as we age. Let's look at the changes in the physiology of the cardiovascular system with aging. In order to understand the physiology, it is important to understand a few key terms. The first is that of cardiac output. Cardiac output is the volume of blood the heart is able to pump from the left ventricle to the body every minute. The cardiac output is determined by the heart rate and the stroke volume. The stroke volume <clears throat> is the volume of blood pumped out with each beat. Looking at this diagram, we also see several factors affecting the heart rate as well as several factors affecting the stroke volume. We've already discussed that the overall size of the heart does not increase with age, but we do have a slight increase in the size of the left ventricle. We do experience a change in the contractility of the heart. This decreases the ability of the left ventricle to contract, leading to a slightly decreased stroke volume. It also will take longer for the ventricle to fill and empty. This decrease in contractility, or in other terms, the strength of contraction, leads to a decrease in overall cardiac output. This is not normally problematic unless the patient is under stress, such as when doing increased physical activity. Continuing to exercise throughout your lifetime will diminish the negative effects significantly. This diagram depicts the conduction pathway of the heart. 
As we age, the pacemaker cells which carry electrical impulses throughout the heart decrease in number and become more irregular. This may lead to increased myocardial irritability and an increased likelihood of the development of arrhythmias. Here is an example of what an arrhythmia may look like on an EKG. The top tracing is normal, whereas the bottom is an arrhythmia termed atrial fibrillation. It would not, I would not classify atrial fibrillation as a normal finding in an older adult, yet it does happen quite commonly. As we age, our blood vessels tend to become more rigid and apt to develop atherosclerosis. As you can see in this diagram, an atherosclerotic vessel is significantly more narrow than a normal healthy artery. This places older adults at risk for the development of heart attacks and strokes. With the increased rigidity of the vessels, older adults are also more likely to develop chronic hypertension. In addition to our blood vessels, we also have what are called baroreceptors. These baroreceptors sense changes in blood pressure and then signal the body to either contract or relax the blood vessels depending on the, bo on the body's needs. In older adults, these receptors do not respond as quickly as they would in a younger person. This leads to the possibility of the development of postural hypotension. For example, when you go from a sitting to a standing position, our baroreceptors use this excuse me, our baroreceptors sense this and cause our vessels to contract in order to keep our blood pressure high enough for blood to travel to the brain. In an older adult, these receptors may be slow to respond, leading to a significant decrease in blood pressure and blood to the brain. This could, this could lead to dizziness and falls in the older adult. It is for this reason that we should always encourage older adults to sit before they stand and then to stand slowly. This concludes our video lecture on the cells, the respiratory system, and the cardiovascular system.